Of a population of 22 million people, 6.5 million people are internally displaced within Syria. Three million more are refugees and have fled the country. The UN right now says that almost 50% desperately need humanitarian aid. They're deprived from their basic needs. They can't have access to food, water, and medicine. There is a concern from aid agencies and from a lot of people that the conflict in Syria is being forgotten. When I visited eastern Turkey and saw the refugee situation and the fallout from the war, it really, it really changed my life. You're meeting people who've watched their children starving to death or poisoned chemical attacks. I ended up traveling on two aid convoys to Syria with a group of British Muslims. I met a man called Alan Henning who on his fourth journey to Syria was kidnapped by ISIS and then was very publicly beheaded on video. This is why we needed to come up with an innovative idea to use micro UAVs to deliver small packages of food and medical aid to besieged areas. In Syria, you see the deliberate use of starvation and medical deprivation. They are being used as weapons, deliberately. So to get around that, people have to smuggle things, and they have to risk their lives to smuggle a few pounds of medicine through a checkpoint. So really, any single package we deliver takes a doctor or some other person of goodwill out of harm's way. We're looking at transporting one, two, five kilograms. And our partnering organizations routinely remind us that you know, even small amounts actually make a huge difference. If you could launch a plane every five minutes and fly all night long, you could deliver 400 pounds a night. That's just if you have one group launching planes. If you had teams all over, you could potentially be moving thousands of pounds a night. If we had everything we needed, we would create a movement. When someone tries to starve out an entire neighborhood, we would darken the skies over those people with food. Alan Henning paid the ultimate price for trying to reach people who other people can't get to. There's not a whole lot of hope left in Syria. People are looking for something to believe in. We really believe we can make a difference there. The idea with this project from the beginning has been to empower Syrian refugees who love their country and want to see peace, want to see people helped that are suffering to do that themselves. So there was this moment this weekend where Mark and I were talking and in the background we heard clear and then the plane took off and we looked at each other and for the first time we realized this was the first plane that we hadn't launched ourselves. We had trained people to go out and do it. We're creative, we're safe, we're go-getters, we're gonna make it happen. It would be amazing if we could go to Turkey and actually see these planes bringing aid to people. To get to Turkey, we need resources, we need money, we also need talent and people. We know what we're trying to do is very difficult. The political issues are complex, legal issues are complex. We view those as challenges to be overcome, but we need help. So we're looking to talk to stakeholders, people who think this can work, people in the development community, the aid community. This project really stands at the intersection of government and the nonprofit world. We need both. So we're always eager to talk to people who can help make this happen. I'm from Syria, from Aleppo, and this project gave me the opportunity to, to do something. It's so meaningful to me. As bad as things can get in the world, there's still a place for good people to do good things that matter.